everybody! I hope you're having a great day. I'm Renee. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. Today, we're going to have a much anticipated episode where I can stuff and teach you how to do it too. So, today I'm pickling uh, some garlic, about two pounds of garlic um, that I either got from my garden or got at a farmer's market. And... Okay, so the first thing that you need to do, I've already done most of the work already, is bleach bath your jars. So I used pint-sized jars. Pint-sized jars, and you only need a little tiny bit of bleach. Um, you can put a stopper in your sink, or I have a plastic tub that I use to do that. It's already pre uh, like used before, so plastic tub. Um, and so then you need to heat up the brine. So you need half and half apple cider vinegar and water. So I used two, two and a half cups of apple cider vinegar, two and a half cups of water, uh, pickling spice, which has uh, mustard seeds and peppercorns and bay leaf and then it also you also need some salt. I only used a little bit because of the chronic kidney disease. I can't use a lot. Um, but it still makes a really good brine. So the next thing that you do after you make the brine, it only needs to be moderately hot. Um, you stuff your jars. So if you're making um, stuffed, you're going to stuff, uh, I st obviously stuffed them with pickled garlic. I'm not unconvinced that you can use this recipe for pickled beets. You can use it for pickled asparagus. You can use it for pickled okra. Whatever you've got, you can use it for. Um, it would actually make really good fresh cucumber pickles too. So you stuff them, stuff up, stuff your jars with as much produce as you can. Um, cause otherwise if you don't do that, the stuff will float and it looks really weird. Um, it also requires a lot more jars if you don't do that. So stuff them with the produce and then you pour the hot brine over top. Um, this works. This is really nice because it's acidic and botulism cannot live in acidic environments. Um, so it makes it safe. So the next thing is you need to heat up your jar lids. Give me just a second so I can show you. Alright, so these ceiling jar lids have like a little gasket, rubber gasket around them. And what heating them does is it softens that gasket so it can make a seal. So, and then you put the jar lid rings, like such. You put the jar lids in the jar, jar rings, and then you screw it on top of the jar. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in the water bath canner. And show you. I got my water bath canner right there from a yard sale. And the cool thing about water bath canners is they have a rack that you can pick up if you want to out of the out of the canner. So you're gonna need to fill that up halfway with water, halfway up with water, and Usually you're going to need a little bit more because you need a little bit, like an inch more over top of the jars in order for them to cook correctly and seal correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on and you set the timer for 25 minutes after it starts boiling. Um, 
Pressure canning is a little bit different. I don't actually have that much experience with this, with pressure canning. Um, water bath canning was oddly really intimidating to me to begin with, but it's actually really easy. Once you get the hang of it, it's super easy. Um, you just not need to like keep a few things in your head as you go. Um, yes. Now, I was thinking while well, that cans, while we're waiting for it to boil, of doing a pantry tour. I tried to do that earlier this week, but the editing things just did not want to edit. So, let's just work on that, huh? Okay. Ooh, that's dark. Excuse the loud buzzing, that's the inverter. We live off-grid, so that's just gonna be a thing. So, this is my apple, this is my <laughs> salsa. Um, both with what we can, what we grew the, in the in the garden this year, and the discount rack at the farmer's market. You can often find, like, bruised produce at farmer's markets. You sometimes just have to ask them, like, the, ask the certain vendors if they have that, um, and if they'd will it, be willing to give it to you, or for a discount price. Um... This is really nice because it keeps it out of the landfill, out of the compost, all of those good things, and it's perfectly good food. You get a couple of slimers, but you just pick those out. It's fine. So the next thing is, I've got some, some things in plastic in here. Some rice noodles, some uh, raw honey, there's some tuna back there, some um, apple or oat bran. And then I got some garbanzo beans. Those are nice for when I want to make um, rice and beans real quick, real fast. Just pop one of those suckers open and it's good. Um, add some salsa and, del and it's, it's freaking delicious. So these are some condiments. More pickles. These are bread and butter pickles and some relish and... I think there's some canned beets back there somewhere. And then there's, these are some asparagus pickles. Sauerkraut is another one that's really easy to make. And it's not hard at all. And it's, it's so, in, it seems so intimidating, but it's really not. <laughs> so sauerkraut that I made a couple of years ago, some walnuts, some juice. These bottles are really cool. Um... I actually use one of these old bottles for uh, for mouthwash, and it works great. And it comes free with the purchase, so why not use it? So there's some new ju some more juice, and these are some loose leaf teas. These this is a really nice matcha tea, and I usually make like upcycle old um, olive jars. For tea because it makes it so much easier to um, put the loose leaf tea in the tea ball. It's great. It's great. So these are peach jam and there's some compote, cranberry compote from um, Thanksgiving um, back when we were living in Greensboro. <laughs> Um, it was left over from a Thanksgiving meal for a campus ministry. And these are a few years old, but they're still good. They're they're tasty. They're they're good. So there's some store bought pasta sauce and these are peaches that I can this my mother in law and I canned. And because there's there was a glut of them at the local farm market near her house. Near her and my father-in-law's house. Um, thanks, Mom. <laughs> so, I just canned them all. And there's some barbecue sauce that's really tasty. 
I think it's made with rhubarb, actually. Um, there's some dry beans, all in upcycled jars. There's some apple spice uh, jelly and pear butter that I made this fall because we have a ton of pears in our yard. There's maple syrup and some peanut butter and more condiments right there. On the other side, we've got more jars, more pickles, more jars in the middle. There's some dry beans and honey right there. And unfortunately, a lot of this, some of this stuff cannot be stored any other way than in plastic, like the soy sauce, the giant bottle of soy sauce, <laughs> and the coconut oil. Um, um, there's my soap making supplies. There's lye and coconut oil and veggie oil in the back. I use tallow or lard or something for the animal fat, whatever is available. Um, in the past, we've used tallow because one of our friends lived at, worked at a butcher shop, so that was just left over. Um, there's some more jars and colanders and a giant bag of nettle tea that is delicious. Um, I like loose leaf teas a lot <coughs> because Oftentimes you can get them at a bargain, and it just makes sense to get them that way. Um, there are a lot of microplastics in tea bags, and so, well, most of them aren't compostable, so it just makes sense to like buy loose leaf as much as possible. So this is um, blackberry jelly. These are more barbecue sauces, and these are reusable Swiffer pads. Um, they're, they work really well. Um, you just use them, throw them in the washing machine, and then wash them, and then you can reuse them. Does not need to be fancy. All right. So these are more bottles. These came with juice from Aldi. And we just liked the, the juice was delicious, and we just liked the bottle so much that we kept them. Because they're awesome, and we're just going to reuse them. And here's another water bath canner, and other random stuff. But yeah, um, canning really does cut down a lot on food waste. Like, the compote. That would have gone to waste. That would have gone to the garbage. And, but we saved it from the landfill. So, and we're going to use it. Now, I like this place because it has a really nicely laid out pantry. So, <coughs> in the places that we've lived before, I didn't have a pantry that I could really, like, organize myself. They were really small, or kind of spread out, or whatever. And, but this one, I can have a really well-organized pantry. I know exactly where everything is. And that does keep me accountable to work my way through all my canned goods in a timely manner. So while it doesn't, the food doesn't go bad, as long as this jar is sealed. But, you still need to work through and eat all the stuff that you can. Um, because otherwise, what's the point? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of eye candy, but, eh. <laughs> Needs to be belly candy. <laughs> so, it does help cut down on food costs. It does help on, cut down on food waste. Um, and canning is a lot of fun. Like, once you get into the habit of doing it, doing it on a regular basis, it just becomes habit. And you can honestly just have, put on good music and, and once you know the, the recipes, basic recipes for what you want to do, it's really easy to get the, get, get the habit done. 
Um, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and set the timer. And I will see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Love you.